Welcome, friends. Welcome to Our Re Reviews Will Kill You. I'm the man you may know as Ian. This is uh, a in living, live human being, Scott. He's this is, in person. This is what the world looks like. I've come out of my cave. This is so weird. I've stepped into the other studio. I've stepped out of my own. And and you at home can notice the second I got out of my studio and back into this one, I had to change everything. So you're welcome. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, today, though, uh, since Scott was here with me live, I wanted to get his reaction on an article that I happened to stumble across, and I wanted to get his opinion. So, uh, just a little bit of spoilers for The Mandalorian Season 2. We all kind of know what happened, but if you saw it, I, I think we all had uh, visceral reactions to it. Um, and this story revolves around a YouTuber named... Um, well, he goes by, some people call him Twos, but he's also Star Wars Theory, very big YouTube channel, probably the most popular Star Wars channel. And he filmed his reaction to the last episode of, of Mandalorian. I guess it's episode, uh, chapter 16. And his reaction was also very visceral. As you can see here on the screen, our friend here, he's, you know, he was very upset. He was sad, but, but not in a bad way. He was very happy. He, he got to see his idol, Luke Skywalker appear on screen in a way that was very triumphant. The music was really good. You know, personally, I was, you know, I was definitely touched by that scene. I, I was excited as, as to what was going on. I was like, I can't believe this is happening. Like, is this real? Are you trying to trick us, Lucasfilm? Well, I can tell you, I didn't realize it was him at first. And I was watching this while I was out on location working on another project. So I'm in a hotel room in the middle of some random state in some random town. And I had an out loud reaction where I actually cheered. I said, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Uh, completely unprompted, out loud like visceral reaction to this thing so I can understand that yeah us as grown men babies <laughs> will have a reaction like that as Lucasfilm may have labeled us we are man babies apparently and uh, that's kind of the root of the problem and just to finish with his story uh, you know for him it touched him on a personal level too because uh, he's a survivor of cancer and he tells a story about how um, you know his idol was Luke Skywalker and Luke Skywalker really meant a lot to him and to see Luke Skywalker in his prime at the height of his Jedi powers, like, you know, it, it's a fictional character, but it's, it's, it's one of those stories that's based on the, uh, you know, J uh, Joe Campbell novel with the, the whole, you know what I'm talking about. The, he's a hero. He's an idol, somebody that, the hero's journey. It's somebody that we, we appreciate. All, it's somebody that we all grew up with, and every time he made an appearance, even the later movies, even as much as we hated them, we still appreciated who he was and what he did. So as he posted his reaction, a, an executive for Lucasfilm, his name is Pablo Hidalgo, uh, made a comment on Twitter. Now, the, what's, what's kind of weird is Pablo Hidalgo's Twitter feed is A, unverified, but they know it's him. But also B, is not, um, it's private. So it took Star Wars Theory a little bit of time to get a hold of the tweet. And apparently what happened, uh, you know, and, and this YouTuber had 30,000 people live stream this, his, his reaction to the video. And it was his first reaction. And, um, you know, this, this guy uh, apparently said something to him like, I'm, I'm trying to find the exact quote, but here's an executive from Lucasfilm, one of the top executives in their story department. And he said something negative about this guy. Okay, here's, here's the tweet. And I'm trying to find it here. It's something about ha having emotions. Or, okay, here's what he said. Emotions are not to be shared. That's the original tweet. I'm, I'm sorry as I'm, I'm going through here. But he, he, he then issued an apology that says, I wish to clarify that my post that emotions are not to be shared was sarcastic self-mockery and certainly not intended to be hurtful to anyone. And I'm deeply sorry. So here he is speaking directly to one of the fans, like a big, big fan and he, he, there's a, yet another Lucasfilm executive with a callous response to the fans. But even then, what's this emotions are not to be shared BS that this guy's feeding now? You have this, it's this weird uh, uh, macho uh, uh, chauvinistic attitude that is unhealthy and we've recognized has been unhealthy for everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. But yeah, emotions are healthy and be free. And why are we getting this BS still from people, especially people in the entertainment industry that live and especially get paid Lucasfilm. and get paid on emotions? 
Well, and that and that's what's that's what's fascinating is here you have John Farvo and uh, Dave Filoni, creators of the Mandalorian, who are clearly super fans. They threw in and, and they didn't do it in in my estimation as just uh, fan bait, right? We're talking about uh, you know people who really created something special, who were really into it. Uh, you know, they threw in Boba Fett and like all these other things that many people would say were like member berries and just things that like for nostalgia's sake, but they really built them into the story, which and, I appreciated. And here's what's interesting. Leading into this, I thought that when they brought back Boba Fett and then when there was the theory that Luke might show up and even thinking like, yeah, it's possible for Luke to show up because you forget the time that this is in. This is right after the second Death Star explosion. Luke is still the young Jedi, the young man that from that series. At leading into that, I thought that it would be stupid. It would be ridiculous. Why would they do this? But then after seeing it and after thinking about it, no, it makes perfect no, they did sense. It right. It's amazing. And I absolutely loved it as well. And yeah, I got emotional. But apparently, I'm not allowed, according to Lucasfilms. <laughs> so may, so what it did is it, it won a lot of fans back. A lot of fans are like, wow. You know, after... And, and that's where this article goes into, where they're talking about the, the emotions of... Uh, you know, the title of the, this Variety article is that it reopens the wounds of The Last Jedi, where you literally had um, the director of Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson, would, would attack fans publicly on Twitter, a verified director of a movie. But, you know, obviously he's defending his piece of art, uh, but people were really upset with his depiction of a cranky old uh, Luke Skywalker, which even if, if you go back... Um, Mark Hamill himself said he didn't feel like he was playing Luke Skywalker. He felt like he was playing Jake Skywalker. Like this was a different character. Made a lot of fans upset. Put a big, uh, you know, clearly hurt them at the box office. Uh, Last Jedi and uh, The Last Skywalker did not do as well as The Force Awakens. And there's been a lot of fan backlash. And here you have more executives coming out publicly shaming people. And I just go, why? Why are you so mad at the Star Wars fans? What is the problem? Like, here this guy has a heartfelt response to seeing his idol from 30 years ago show up in a, in, you know, in some ways people would say it a proper fashion. We understand you might be bitter because we all shat all over the last three movies that you put out, but they <laughs> deserved it. Let's be fair. So but when, that's passion. That's the fans being passionate. And that is. That's absolute passion. And yeah, if, if we didn't get mad about it, and if we didn't hate it, that means that we didn't love the original series. We didn't have these feelings. We didn't grow up with it. We didn't have the emotion that we're not allowed to show around the Star Wars universe. And the fact that we care that much, that we get mad when you screw it up, tells you everything about this fan base. And a strongest, probably the strongest fan base in the universe as near, near as it may be, not far, far away. <laughs> so I guess my point for bringing up this article and, and sharing this reaction with Scott was really to look at, you know, why are we, uh, why are they fighting fan bases? You know, in, in the, if you think about it, you know, as we're going through this, this crisis now, we, we were in the feast times when they could afford to have opinions and not win over fans. Now we're heading into famine times. You know, the if I remember correctly, the, the theme park itself is losing like $9 billion because it's closed. At least that's what they reported last year. We look like we're going into almost a second year of this where they're not going to have the same level of access. And you get, you, you, have, you have a fan base that is dying for not to be lectured. They just want to see an honest depiction that, that's honest to the source material. And why you would fight the fan base, especially such a rabid one, it just makes no sense to me. It doesn't make financial sense. It doesn't make any sense other than you have some sort of like weird preoccupation with fighting the fan base. So I felt like it was important that we talked about this article. And, and it's, it was a story that I was going to ignore because we don't often talk about these things. But I felt when, when it started, you know, a bunch of YouTubers have already talked about this. But with the, uh, with the rest of the fan base... Really, uh, and, and going to, to mainstream media where you have an article like Variety talking about this. I felt it was important. I do appreciate uh, Scott's opinion as well because I think we're both, you know, you can see an ad at in, in my corner. I, I've had many episodes of uh, the show here where there's, we've explained our fan base. Yeah, there's glasses over there's there too. There's my ridiculous glasses as well. Is my head hiding out now. You see Baby Yoda in the background. Like, we're fans here. 
and uh, not just commentary. And, and we just wanted to give our our expression of oh, it too. Wait, I've almost forgot. I'm in studio. Does that mean I have to wear sunglasses? Oh yeah, it's so bright in here. I, I mean, know, these right? lights are blinding. Just, I feel so much cooler now. So anyway, uh, thank you for listening to us on this rant. We'll have this rant and others, and uh, we're going to be bringing you a little bit more material like this, not just on our regular podcast. If you have enjoyed what you heard here, please give us a like and subscribe. And, uh, and like and so like the much. studio. Doesn't this look so much better? Yeah, I, I, I'm still on the fence about it. But <laughs> thank you, everybody, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.